preface to Samson Agonistes. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Martin Giessen. Samson Agonistes by John Milton. The Preface of that sort of dramatic poem which is called tragedy tragedy as it was anciently composed hath been ever held the gravest moralist and most profitable of all other poems therefore said by aristotle to be of power by raising pity and fear or terror to purge the mind of those and such like passions that is to temper and reduce them to just measure with a kind of delight stirred up by reading or seeing those passions well imitated nor is nature wanting in her own effects to make good his assertion for so in physic things of melancholic hue and quality are used against melancholy sour against sour salt to remove salt humours hence philosophers and other gravest writers as cicero plutarch and others frequently cite out of tragic poets both to adorn and illustrate their discourse the apostle paul himself thought it not unworthy to insert a verse of euripides into the text of holy scripture one corinthians chapter fifteen verse thirty three and pareus commenting on the revelation divides the whole book as a tragedy into acts distinguished each by a chorus of heavenly harpings and song between heretofore men in highest dignity have laboured not a little to be thought able to compose a tragedy of that honour dionysius the elder was no less ambitious than before of his attaining to the tyranny augustus caesar also had begun his ajax but unable to please his own judgment with what he had begun left it unfinished seneca the philosopher is by some thought the author of those tragedies at least the best of them that go under that name gregory nazianzen a father of the church thought it not unbeseeming the sanctity of his person to write a tragedy which he entitled christ's suffering this is mentioned to vindicate tragedy from the small esteem or rather infamy which in the account of many it undergoes at this day with other common interludes happening through the poet's error of intermixing comic stuff with tragic sadness and gravity or introducing trivial and vulgar persons which by all judicious hath been counted absurd and brought in without discretion corruptly to gratify the people and though ancient tragedy use no prologue yet using sometimes in case of self-defence or explanation that which martial calls an epistle in behalf of this tragedy coming forth after the ancient manner much different from what among us passes for best thus much beforehand may be epistled that chorus is here introduced after the greek manner not ancient only but modern and still in use among the italians 
in the modelling therefore of this poem with good reason the ancients and italians are rather followed as of much more authority and fame the measure of verse used in the chorus is of all sorts called by the greeks monostrophic or rather apolelumenon without regard had to strophe antistrophe or epod which were a kind of stanzas framed only for the music then used with the chorus that sung not essential to the poem and therefore not material or being divided into stanzas or pauses they may be called alaiostrofa division into act and scene referring chiefly to the stage to which this work never was intended is here omitted it suffices if the whole drama be found not produced beyond the fifth act of the style and uniformity and that commonly called the plot whether intricate or explicit which is nothing indeed but such economy or disposition of the fable as may stand best with verisimilitude and decorum they only will best judge who are not unacquainted with aeschylus sophocles and euripides the three tragic poets unequalled yet by any and the best rule to all who endeavour to write tragedy the circumscription of time wherein the whole drama begins and ends is according to ancient rule and best example within the space of twenty-four hours the argument samson made captive blind and now in the prison at gaza there to labour as in a common workhouse on a festival day in the general cessation from labour comes forth into the open air to a place nigh somewhat retired there to sit a while and bemoan his condition where he happens at length to be visited by certain friends and equals of his tribe which make the chorus who seek to comfort him what they can then by his old father manoah who endeavours the like and withal tells him his purpose to procure his liberty by ransom lastly that this feast was proclaimed by the philistines as a day of thanksgiving for their deliverance from the hands of samson which yet more troubles him manoah then departs to prosecute his endeavour with the philistian lords for samson's redemption who in the meanwhile is visited by other persons and lastly by a public officer to require coming to the feast before the lords and people to play or show his strength in their presence he at first refuses dismissing the public officer with absolute denial to come at length persuaded inwardly that this was from god he yields to go along with him who came now the second time with great threatenings to fetch him the chorus yet remaining on the place manoah returns full of joyful hope to procure ere long his son's deliverance in the midst of which discourse an hebrew comes in haste confusedly at first and afterward more distinctly relating the catastrophe what samson had done to the philistines and by accident to himself wherewith the tragedy ends 
the persons samson manoa the father of samson dalila his wife arafa of gath public officer messenger chorus of danites end of the preface recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey